Dairyland's evolving generating resources have been an important part of our history. During the 1960s, construction began on Wisconsin's first nuclear power reactor, located on the Mississippi River in Genoa, Wisconsin. The power plant was named the La Crosse Boiling Water Reactor, also known as LACBAR. At that time, the plant was one of several demonstration reactors funded partly by the Federal Atomic Energy Commission, which is now called the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC. These small but innovative plants were built to demonstrate the peacetime use of nuclear power. Yes, it was one of the first in the country, not the first, but one of the first in the country. The plant was designed and constructed by the well-known tractor and farm equipment manufacturer Alice Chalmers, giving it the nickname the Tractor Reactor. Compared to today's facilities, Lackbar was very small. The plant was designed to produce only 50 megawatts of electricity. For comparison, Dairyland's Genoa Station No. 3, built on the same site as Lackbar at around the same time, is a 345 megawatt facility. Future nuclear facilities being built in the United States, as in Zion, Illinois, were designed to produce 1,000 to 1,500 megawatts. Construction consisted of a large domed building which housed the 310-ton reactor vessel, a three-story turbine power generating building, and the control room and offices. A large 350-foot exhaust stack was also built adjacent to the reactor building. Construction was completed in 1967, and commercial operation was also achieved that year. There, there was a lot of testing and things going on in the 60s. They came online full-time in the early, early 70s. In 1973, transfer of ownership from the Atomic Energy Commission to Dairyland was finalized for the price of just one dollar. For over the next 20 years, the plant operated successfully. But due to increased federal regulation and its relatively small size, LACBAR was no longer economically viable and the facility ceased operations. Uh, LACBAR was a, a good design and it lasted for well over you know, 20 years and could have gone longer but there was just not enough megawatts being produced to pay all the bills. LACBAR was shut down and placed in safe store by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in April 1987. All 333 spent fuel elements are stored at the Independent Spent Fuel Storage Installation, or ISFACI, in state-of-the-art concrete and steel casks on the Genoa site. So all the fuel that was used during the 20 years that LACBAR operated is now stored here in dry cask storage. The ISFACI site is maintained by Dairyland in accordance with all Nuclear Regulatory Commission requirements. These dry casks, as they are known, are guarded and monitored daily, but Dairyland was not intended to be the primary superintendent for the storage and removal of all LACBAR's spent material. The fuel that was used at the LACBAR site was loaded into five canisters that are now being stored just south of the coal plant here at the, the ISFACI site. The U.S. government was mandated by the Nuclear Waste Policy Act to begin receiving spent fuel from nuclear reactors at a repository in January 1998. The government was tasked with removal, storage, and costs for sites like in Genoa. Their main goal was to provide safe, permanent disposal sites like the proposed Yucca Mountain site in Nevada. Nearly 20 years after the deadline, we still don't have a national repository. So at that time, there wasn't a thought that we would ever end up with storage on our site. It was just never thought that that would be a problem. Due to federal funding cuts and lack of alternative disposal options currently available, Dairyland has incurred all removal and storage costs since 1987. Since the shutdown of LACBAR, Dairyland has incurred all spent material removal, transfer, and storage costs, plus additional costs to monitor and maintain the ISFACI site on a daily basis. So we're always looking to try to figure out ways to minimize the cost to our membership, and we recognize that LACBAR is a, a stranded asset in many ways. So uh, the best recourse uh, currently available to us is to uh, pursue government lawsuits. That's not a perfect solution for us. Uh, we don't get all of our costs back, but we've gotten a lot of them back over the last uh, eight to ten years as we've settled those lawsuits. Because the U.S. government had breached their original agreement and is yet to provide safe and permanent solutions for spent materials, Dairyland has filed lawsuits with the federal government. We just uh, 
settled our second case in the Nuclear Waste Policy Act, it's called. And because the fuel's not off-site, uh, like the government suggested it would be, uh, we've had to uh, try to get our money back for our members through various lawsuits. To date, Dairyland has prevailed with favorable court decisions totaling $111 million to help recoup some of the LACBAR costs. A major milestone in the decommissioning process was achieved in 2007 when the 300-ton reactor pressure vessel was safely removed from the reactor building and shipped off to be disposed at a special site in South Carolina. Um, the reactor was taken out and shipped in 2007. Um, special challenges was getting the, the vessel out itself whole and ready for shipment to our Barnwell facility. Dairyland contracted with Energy Solutions, a national radioactive waste services contractor, to facilitate the removal and disposal of the reactor pressure vessel. We started talking to Energy Solutions. Uh, it's a firm that's currently decommissioning uh, the Zion nuclear plant in Illinois. Um, they are nuclear decommissioning experts. This was a major task to complete due to a number of factors in the original design. Because the reactor building was originally built using solid concrete, no door was designed for containment reasons. Special techniques and equipment were devised to cut the reactor out so it could be removed. In May of 2016, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission transferred the license of the LACBAR site from Dairyland to La Crosse Solutions for the final stages of decommissioning the LACBAR facility. The license will transfer back to Dairyland once decommissioning is complete. So by 2019, we're hoping to have uh, the project behind us and uh, we'll get the license back. Energy Solutions specializes in safely decommissioning nuclear sites such as the large complex in Zion, Illinois and post-World War II facilities in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. La Crosse Solutions' goal is to safely bring the site to its original condition. This will require the removal of all internal and external components at the LACBAR site. In the latter part of 2016, La Crosse Solutions began the dismantling of the 350-foot exhaust stack and the removal of remaining internal components in the reactor and turbine buildings. In April of 2017, demolition began of the main turbine building. All materials will then be sorted and placed in special containers to be shipped off-site for disposal. As advanced as the LACBAR facility was at the time of construction, it outlived its viability as a cost-effective means with which to provide Dairyland members safe, sustainable, and reliable energy. The challenges of decommissioning a nuclear site emphasizes Dairyland's dedication to the safety of its employees and the public. The, the project is doing well. Um, we're roughly two years ahead of schedule from the original um, schedule that was in hand. Uh, and this project it really has been a lot about unity and it's uh, been on a lot of employees' radars for decades, frankly. Uh, but it's unity of the board of directors, it's uh, uh, the employees, it's the contractors that we've involved ourselves with, uh, everybody trying to work together to uh, take what once was a, a really good project and try to minimize our long-term liabilities for the good of our membership.